Okay, so in this video, we're going to be talking about naming and forming compounds. Now, specifically in uh, what I did was I broke this in this whole segment into three separate videos. The first video is going to be on, on naming ionic compounds. Video two will be on forming ionic compounds, like writing the formulas for them. And then the third one will be on naming and forming molecular compounds. So let's tackle the, the naming of ionic compounds, because that's the easiest thing that we can do. Okay, so what is an ionic compound? Well, you have to remember what an ion is first. And we talked about what electrons do, and electrons are in charge of ions. So what it means is an ion is any atom that is either gained or lost electrons. And because of that, it now has a charge. So uh, it can attract other things. So positive ions will attract negative ions, sort of like positive and negatives of a, of a magnet. So let's talk about ionic compounds. Now there's two types of ionic compounds. There are anions, which are your positive ions. So cations, like I said, are called your, I'm sorry, not anions. Your positive ions are called cations. And the way we're going to name them, and you'll see this throughout, is we take the element's name, and we just add ion on it. For example, sodium plus. So sodium with a plus one charge is the sodium ion. Ag plus is a silver ion. Now, in chemistry, we don't write ones a lot. So if you ever see just a plus sign, that plus sign means that it's plus one, meaning that it has one less electron. Now, the other type of ion is a negative ion, and those negative ions are called anions. So anions are a little bit more complicated. What you'll see with those is we take the first part of the element's name, and then we add IDE to the end. So anytime you see IDE on something, you know immediately that it's a negative ion. For example, Cl with minus one charge becomes chloride. O with a minus two charge becomes oxide. Now there's some funky ones in there. Like iodine makes my favorite. It's called iodide. It's really cool. So some of the names get a little fun funky, like phosphide um, in there. Oh, usually the rule of thumb that I tell people is when you're trying to figure out where the IDE goes, say the word out loud. If it doesn't sound right, you probably didn't do it right. Like some people think phosphorus should become phosphoride, but phosphoride doesn't really sound right. Phosphide sounds perfect. Okay, now to actually make the compounds. So here's what you're going to do. You need to go into your notebook right now and pull out your green sheet. So pause the video real fast and get the green periodic table that I gave you in class and flip it over to the other side. Great. Now that you've got that periodic table, now you've got your ion chart in front of you, you'll notice that the top half is made up of positive ions and the bottom half is made up of negative ions. If we want to form a compound, all we do is we take the name of the compound from the top half of the chart and the name of the negative ion from the bottom half of the chart, and we put the two together. So, for example, if we look up Na on the top, we see that it's sodium. If we look up Cl on the bottom, we see it's chloride, so this NaCl becomes sodium chloride. Ag, so Ag is silver from the top half of the chart. I, um, iodine becomes iodide from the bottom half of the chart, and you get silver iodide. Li from the top half of the chart is lithium. CO3 is on the bottom half of the chart, and that's lithium carbonate. Now, this is a little bit more complicated, and I'll get into this, why there's this Roman numeral in the middle of it when we get into the forming of compounds um, in the next video. So Fe is iron, O is oxide, and we end up getting iron 3 oxide. Ni is nickel. SO4 is sulfate, and if we look, we see it's nickel-1, so it's nickel-1-sulfate. And that's everything you need to know for the naming of, and form, uh, naming of ionic compounds. So what I want you to do right now is um, now move on to the second video, and the second video is going to talk about forming those ionic compounds and crisscrossing charges.